This game, though, does not have any level of borderless full screen uh, that works. But uh, how are you doing, Blep? And this first part does not have... Oh god, where did my... Uh... Made the uh, great decision to turn off my controller without first turning off gamepad. And it has been a while. I definitely understand that one. So I am going to go through the tutorial. Now, one of the things that I always really enjoyed with this game is that the uh, little physics base for, for how you fly around in uh, regular flight tends to work pretty well. Now, this weapon, which is called Fiasco's Face Breaker, is uh, kind of absurd. Mainly because of that long range and uh, quick recovery. I want to line this up with the window. I mean, as, as you can see from that little bit, it uh, it's a Tom Francis game. Uh, I got this game originally entirely because I loved the hell out of Gunpoint. Um, and Gunpoint's a funny one, because when I first got Gunpoint, I played the tutorial and stopped. And then, like, I don't know, a couple weeks later, I played up until the point of I, I started the tutorial again and I played the tutorial and the first action that it, it tells you to do in that one is uh, basically you have a, a you have two moves in gunpoint you can jump or you can punch and there is a achievement for punching somebody I don't know like a hundred times or a couple hundred times they die after you punch them a handful of times, so it's it's purely an achievement for people who just keep fucking clicking. And, uh... So, for like, two years... The achievements that I had were... the little, um, essentially do the tutorial and beat the ever-living shit out of somebody bunch, you know, fucking like 200 goddamn times. And I mean, I was, I was late as far as, uh, 
Gunpoint goes. So by the time I finished Gunpoint, I think this game was was actually out. And so it was well, I I want another Tom Francis game. And this was out, and it's this. I like this one even more than Gunpoint, but a lot of that is just everything in it works really well. So that's actually a good point that's made by Breaker in that little dialogue. Your, your characters that have really done a lot, gotten a lot of weapons, gotten a lot of items, gotten unique things, some of them have unique abilities, they are a lot more powerful than the rookies. Just end of statement. Case in point, this character has a long blade um, as their only real permanent weapon, and the emergency shield is single use. Uh, this character's emergency shield, if I, I guess I can't do that, um, I'll need to click on it. Um, but basically, this character with a concussion hammer is, by an order of magnitude, probably the strongest character here since none of them have, uh... Well... None of them have particularly good weapons otherwise. Uh, but I think that this... Uh, emergency shield is reusable. No, it's just that it's... Interesting, interesting. I don't know what the fuck that means. Um... And of course it can unlock characters on your friend lists characters that got captured but like I said I think the concussion hammer is the strong one mainly because of that quick recovery I think it also has a longer range than the wrench no it's just that it has the quick recovery so I am going to play as this character And this is just demonstrating some of the stuff you can do. One of which is, you can actually just attack from the uh, UI menu. Which is great. And of course, if you have two uh, weapons equipped, you can just keep attacking. Provided they are quick recovery. It, um, it does necessitate them being reasonably quick weapons. Um, obviously slow weapons just don't, don't work. It is what it is. But I mean, this, this is actually an entirely safe mission because of that glitch back guarantee. Um, There's really nothing for us. There's nothing too difficult about this one, amusingly. But it's also one of those things of a lot of this is just familiarity with the mechanics. And while I have not played in years, I think it's all just just like six months, but 
it feels like a year. It uh, is still not too, too bad. Now, I want to wait for that guy to be turned around. Or I can just come around from the back. But I tend to prefer taking out all of the guards. But of course, if we take out the pilot, none of it matters. And the reason I say that is because once we have taken out the pilot, they can't call for help anymore. They can't escape anymore. It's uh, actually a pretty powerful play. And while we can actually rescue the person, we can also, instead, just take out all of the guards and then we don't have to worry about anything. So now we can just head over to the chair and autopilot it back. Which is, that's the real reason that it's my preference to uh, take out everybody. The other stuff isn't that useful, but a quiet shotgun is going to be extremely useful. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how a lot of the missions go. Now this is actually a bit difficult, and there's there's two reasons for it. The first is this emergency sh uh, emergency shield. Which, if they're alerted, basically just means you can't kill them. Um, the second is that the these guards can teleport instantly. Now, they aren't that big of a deal. The shield is. Um, but generally speaking, it's worth it to do these types of missions. Um, obviously, the assassinate things are not going to be that difficult. And I do rather like the, the dialogue options. Awkward hovering is always something good to practice. And of course, one of the big things that was introduced, I don't think it was there in, in the start, at least, 
is the speed up. The, uh, the gradual zoom as you get closer to your target was always present and always very much appreciated. So something I do like about this, these ships and attacking these ships is they don't have any lethal weapons. Now the quiet concussive gun, I mean concussive guns in general are worthwhile. Uh, because sometimes you just, you don't want to kill your target. And sometimes there's no easy way to avoid killing your target. So that was a little bit annoying to deal with. And these guys are are rough because if they see you, that shield activates. So you have to take them out from a distance. What? Oh, I guess somebody uh, saw a body. Personally, I want what is in that crate. It's probably something good. Usually it's something good. Here's our first rechargeable item. I love rechargeable items. Now obviously, well actually that's not true, the, these all concussive guns are uh, rechargeable, just they're kind of silently rechargeable. Um, we have an optional thing to steal. Oh yeah, I always forget that we can uh, actually move the camera around with shift. It's useful for scouting out, I just, I honestly almost never do it. So this is going to actually be a little bit tough to deal with. For a few reasons, really. One of which is with almost any of the possible configurations here, one of the guards is going to be able to see us. And that was me being dumb. I forgot to hit this on the way. So this is where our actual item is. Now fortunately the guards are not very smart at this level. They get smarter as the game goes on, but early on they don't really look around that well. Now 
Now, the interesting thing is, because that's not a lethal weapon, if it did hit us, given that the guards aren't really that keyed into us right now, the only thing that would happen is we would be unconscious for a while. Now, I do like the space mechanics, even though I'm not good at them, but... Obviously, getting no alarms is preferable. Getting no kills is debatably preferable. Now, this is something we, we actually probably want, so... This one is probably worth doing just on the basis of it provides us access to a good weapon. Um, but essentially what we will eventually want are uh, rechargeable methods of dealing with those shields. Um, essentially like a... Uh, And you need to actually be pretty quick on that for it to actually work. It's uh, somewhat annoying in that manner. Uh, I was actually surprised that didn't get an alarm hit on me. Yeah, crash beams. Crash beams are one of the things we will definitely want. And... I don't remember what the key for tossing stuff is. It's not important right now. Cell shields can be pretty good. Okay, so throw is T. I believe you can knock yourself out by throwing stuff. I had forgotten about that until it bounced back. It appears that they have, at some point in time, made those, uh, uh, emergency shields friendlier. Uh, it used to be that as soon as that alert started, you were just in a shitty situation. But it might be that that, uh, is only the case if, like, they see a body. really care much for the acid traps, but, uh, I'm never going to use that quiet shotgun. I don't remember exactly what those- oh, armor piercing. Uh, that is for a specific type of weapon. Um, armor piercing weapons, of course, pierce armor, which is something we have not yet dealt with. And most likely won't need to. Uh, at least for a bit. Um, I think it, it's not until you actually start taking out, um, start liberating as the, the game calls it, things that you get these harder mission types that, uh... Yeah, that's it. Liberations unlock specific items. In this case, liberating this would unlock rechargeable crash beams, 
rechargeable crash beams are one of the most important things in the goddamn game. Super shotguns are also really, really good, but it's not the, um, it does not unlock the concussive super shotgun, I don't think. So it's basically irrelevant. And there's also various other ship types that we would have access to. Um, but just overwhelmingly, the most important item here is that rechargeable crash beam, in my opinion. Now, I feel that this is a little bit of a kind of weakness of the game. You have these big... Now, that ore causing them to die is notable. I did not kill that captain that we have killed, but he did die, so that would have failed a bloodless mission. Um. Oh yeah, and there's the defector missions. I always forget about those. The defector missions are kind of what's in place in instead of having liberations be something your characters can actually do. I don't recall too much as far as how the defector missions go because I haven't really done most of them. Um, now, sentry guns are extremely annoying, but... The actual people here aren't too, too bad, so uh, we will do this. And something I, I also didn't check out show is uh, shops. One of the big things, of course, being that the shops here. Oh, you actually we actually can sell stuff. I'd forgotten about that. Um, as such, I'm going to sell almost all of this yeah because I don't I don't use most of the stuff and grab a, uh, a rechargeable crash beam we actually still have enough for our personal mission which is a little bit surprising now the overpriced items are sometimes really good uh, self-charging items are absolutely ridiculous um, I don't think I've ever gotten anything good out of the mystery crate, which makes sense. There is a fairly large item pool. And after a while, it becomes, well, if it's not rechargeable, if it's not self-charging, you just don't care. Ah, this is actually... A very strangely designed ship. Ah. Sometimes I, I have trouble seeing where the, uh, if it's done via uh, little hubs, where the key cards come from. Okay, so that's just quite concussive guns. But one of the nice things about our setup, uh, although that did nearly fail anyway, um, wait, why didn't, oh, I never actually came up here, did I? Oh, uh, so, I had just made the comment about uh, rechargeable crash beams. Well, this is self-charging. As you can see, it's got a lot of charges because it's also high capacity. 
And if I had lined that up properly, um, it would have demonstrated that everything in that line gets turned off. That's one of the real reasons why the long range ones are occasionally really powerful. There isn't anything that makes them wider in application. Yeah, almost all of this stuff doesn't really sell, but, uh... Oh, we can actually sell directly from our stash. That's good. And of course, it's not really all that much money for us, so... And from here on, our personal mission will be present. Now, this particular type of personal mission will be a giant pain in the ass because of these guys. But with that rechargeable, not rechargeable, self-charging crash beam, I think we actually are in a good spot as far as that goes. And those lights are not just for show. If uh, if we were to run into them, we would get shot. That's categorically a bad thing. So even though the um, weapon states that it is, you know, quick charging, it's not as quick charging as I would like. Uh, I don't have the ability to take on all four with just a single concussion hammer. Fortunately, by virtue of... Now, yeah, that's... that's I, I don't really have the ability to uh, do that in the 30 seconds. Um, not the least of which because... Well... The enemies present in this require you to take it a little bit slower. So... But the personal mission doesn't go away, which is one of the advantages of it. It doesn't meaningfully change time to time, but it does not go away. Now the ship layouts are random, which is both good and bad. And of, of course that uh, that person glitching over uh, actually got themselves shot as a result. Um, and this one actually resulted in a fair number of 
them getting shot as well. Uh, I don't want to do that. So we shot once, the guard, guard shot once, guard took out everybody. The glitch dash is... Well... Interesting. And I need to remember that it is left click to actually throw their bodies. Now what they're curious about is the enemy's been gone a while, or the, the guards have been gone a while. But yeah, this is, you know, kind of one of the, I don't want to necessarily call it issues with uh, the glitch dash guards, but uh, it's definitely a problem for them. I'm actually surprised that one didn't die. I fully expected him to uh, get launched out the window. There's no reason to drop down into there. Hmm. This might go poorly. Yeah, in fact, I think it is going to go poorly. I got lucky. So yeah, this, this game does consist of a fair amount of using pause effectively. This device, in this case, is a self-charging crash beam that's not as good as the one we already have. Yeah, that's just how, how it is sometimes. Ship secured. I think the only thing left is this uh, one box. And it's an acid trap. That's fine. Hmm. 
Now you can use the speed up. That's sometimes it uh, the speed up button opens the inventory, and I have yet to figure out entirely why that is. But uh, unfortunately, regardless of what type of weapon it is, it does not sell for anything. And the selling price of the Volantis device relative to the self-charging high-capacity crash beam is actually kind of amusing. Now, the reason that you will eventually want your characters to retire is... Once they have done enough... Um, now, this enough is somewhat difficult to tell sometimes. But once you have done enough missions, you will start having a liberation percentage penalty. And eventually your liberation progress will go down to 0%, which is very annoying. Oh, these, these particular enemies are annoying, especially if you don't yet have a non-lethal weapon. Um, but these types of enemies in general are kind of rough. So most likely it will be... I think most likely we would take an easier mission for that. But let's see if uh, liberating something changes the missions we have available. Uh, the acid extractor is useful. Um, Grabbing that as a character that has already done their liberation mission seems a little bit pointless, though. And if that seems like I didn't really uh, read or look too much at the mission that is uh, actually correct. Most of the time, after a while, you kind of get the hang of, of which missions are going to potentially be an issue. And ultimately, oh, hey, this is one of the best weapons available. It's not non-lethal, like the Concussion Hammer, but that Armor Pierce alongside its, uh... Actual quick, um, attack. Uh, unlike this Concussion Hammer's quick recovery, the Short Blades have a considerably faster a quick recovery. Hmm. So yeah, since all of my stuff is rechargeable, it doesn't really matter which... what I use. And since we killed, well, knocked out everybody. We are actually in a good spot to just return. And with some characters, that's that's really all you do. Um, Autopilot is annoying. 
reason for that is the whole the alarm can't be disabled if the alarm goes active it goes active you don't have any way of dealing with it um, initially I misread these two and thought they were this was capture Sly Kavanis and this was assassinate Sly Kavanis and I was going to be somewhat amused I believe I have also seen a assassinate with well okay that's not true prior to it getting fixed I would occasionally see a like assassinate with a capture or a kill no one tag or a bloodless tag and it was one of those things of well that just meant that you needed to capture them and turn them in. It ultimately wasn't a huge deal, it was just somewhat annoying. So, like, this is rather dangerous now, mostly. Now, we can also just take them back. That is always an option with assassinate missions. Now, that doesn't change anything. Just this text here. But the, the bloodless thing has always been capable of being done because it only cares about the non-target crew. Now, in this case, concussive guns and the, uh, the key cloners being added to the shop. Now, audacious plans can be very, very difficult. Um, crash traps can be pretty good. I don't think we actually have crash traps just straight unlocked, which is interesting. But I think the key cloners, so we can get to rechargeable key cloners, and this is just purchase purchasable in the shop. Obviously, they are available out in the world regardless. Uh, and we are at, already at the point of we have reduced liberation progress. Now this is actually really difficult primarily because of this contractor defender. Now the defender is, seems to be not as difficult considered by the game as the jammer, which is trash. Because... The defender makes everybody invincible. You have no way of dealing with them. And on a ship that already has a shit ton of guards, it just sucks. Um, so this character is a perfectly legitimate candidate for retiring. I think we're going to do this mission and then probably retire the character just because they're 
pretty close to not being able to be that useful. As far as what the... Um, when you retire, I think if you retire and you have done your personal mission, you get to choose a item that is kind of that character's special item, and that item can show up in the future as so-and-so's whatever. Uh, when I first played the game, almost universally, if I had a concussive hammer, especially early on before I had access to good items, that personal item would be the concussive hammer. Damn it. one's actually, you know, mostly a bad idea to do, but we've already solved our issue. So nobody's actually seen us, which is, I mean, surprising. Even though there was enough time to activate the alarm, nobody actually managed to see us. Wait, is there... Ah, this guard. I was wondering why the ship hadn't been secured yet. Now, interestingly, even if you fly the ship back, if, if there was a witness, it um, doesn't automatically kill them for you. So you can fail the Enigma bonus even if you drive the ship back. And actually, that's, that's not that much of a drop. 75%. Now, the tracker is extremely annoying. Uh, one of the things you can do with these types of contracts, though, is if you can find the telepad, if you know what the telepad looks like, you can go over, subvert it. Subvert it just changes it so that it teleports them outside, set off an alarm, and get the fuck out. Now the problem is that we are doing a capture mission. So we need to get out, then get in our ship, and then get over to them in the like 10 seconds or whatever it is. It's just kind of rough. This mission in general is going to be kind of rough. We have the tools to do it. I think. I feel we do anyway. Well, I thought we did. I was incorrect. So that was our first bit of potentially lethal damage. Uh, basically, what happened there is I fucked up. And the first way in that I fucked up was I missed with that gunshot. And by virtue of not having a second gunshot, I had no option available to me that uh, would not set off the alarm. And also potentially get me shot anyway, but...
The tracker's rough to deal with, but a lot of that is... Well, I mean, a lot of that's just everything about them. Um, oh, here we have an actual shield. Both shield and armor. Now, shields are something that, you know, as the, the text there says, they are something that is amazing to subvert. Um, rechargeable subverters, and especially self-charging subverters, are one of the most absurd power plays available. Um, and they also have armor. So the only item we have that, that can deal with armor, and generally speaking, the only item that you will have in most playthroughs, once you unlock the armor-piercing short blade to be purchased in shops, is the armor-piercing short blade. That's it. Most of the time, armor is just something you, you don't have ways to deal with. Armor is kind of misery-inducing, and especially if you were sitting there and even the basic Asgards have armor, it's not a mission you want to take. Uh, the worst one, I think you can get armored guards that are explosive. I don't know if that's still a valid combination, though. It used to be. And it was one of those things of, cool, that mission is just actually impossible. Since I don't think armor-piercing concussive weapons exist. But of course, the reality of the situation is that just means you need to subvert any sentry guns. But if the ship doesn't have sentry guns, you just kind of get fucked. Now... Yeah, this is where we can retire the character. Yeah, so we have one of the six unique items. And we can... You know, obviously these, these items can be... You know, it was the key cloner. Now, I prefer doing it with a self-charging item. I don't tend to change the name. But if, if our character doesn't have anything particularly special, I think we can also do it with the Volantis device. But the self-charging is actually better. And of course, we can look and see if... Because this does change pretty frequently, this character actually has... is really good. Now, that self-charging on guns is kind of ridiculous. That vow is going to be really tricky. Um, Now, this character is, of course, kind of ridiculous. And I think the only thing that they really are going to want as an addition... ...is this rechargeable crash beam. Otherwise, they probably are fine with doing hard missions and occasionally harder missions. Now, I believe all liberation progress uh, sticks around because, of course, it's associated with doing the missions for Seder rather than uh, individual progress, so to speak. Um, now here, the only one I'm actually concerned about is, of course, this character. As they are moving, they are no longer going to be a concern. And the shotgun being quick fire actually is extremely useful. because it means I don't really need to be concerned about it. Well, I wasn't expecting to kill anybody, but okay. 
If you are in the room when a window explodes, you will be pulled out. Uh, a lot of the stuff is not... Uh, with space is not, like, particularly amazingly done. The getting pulled out works really well. Now all we're going to do with that swapper is sell it, but that's fine. This particular combo means that I don't... I will most likely, I should say. Oh yeah, uh, hitting F near an item um, just br brings up the item to uh, pick up. And of course, since we have this acid extractor available, we can hit that up and that will provide us almost the entirety of the money needed to... Uh, grab the mission. Uh, we're at 155 and we need 200, I think. Since we've not done... Uh... any of Seder's missions. This should not be too, too bad. Now, the interesting thing is if you knock your capture target out um, and, and you're both in a room that has a window, usually your bodies will stay close enough together that you can pick both of you up at the same time. This is relevant basically never. And note, even though our weapon is quiet, it still can, you know, cause alarms. Damn it. So where the hell is our capture target? There we go. And for the record, this is what the telepads look like. I don't think there's any point for the player ever uh, hitting him. And that has our personal mission intel, so that's useful. That's something we are going to want to grab. But we can drop this person off in our pod. And then we don't have to worry about if we end up getting uh, thrown out. There's a lot of rechargeable stuff in this one. I this is kind of the opposite of my experience with the game in the past. Uh, huh.
Now, since I cannot set off an additional alarm, none of this really matters. And I'm just trying to get uh, items. See, like, this is what I would be more expecting to see. Or, like, a single-use visitor. Like, that's, that's what you used to get all the time, is just, you know, single-use, non-rechargeable, non-recharging. Um, items. And that's, that's what I expected to get here. I didn't expect, you know, first character to end up with a full inventory of rechargeable, let alone a single, re, you know, self-charging item. Because self-charging used to be, you'd, you'd more frequently see it on your, oh, hey, this is a different, uh, different station. One of the, the ones that we have liberated. And of course, this shows us the price of a overpriced, self-charging, long-range Sidewinder. It's still useful. Um, for the right character, that can be one of the best items in the game. Now this, this is probably my least favorite type of mission. Um, basically, because of the predator, ignoring everything else, because of the predator themselves, this is a bitch and a half. We need to subvert uh, the Predator stuff, or that mission is just not doable. We don't have a subverter. So this mission is not going to be doable for a while. That ignores the fact that these guys can have the aforementioned explosive armor combo that's basically impossible to deal with. And... What's not mentioned with explosive is that when explosive goes off, that little square of the ship explodes. If that is on the critical path to reach your guard that you need to capture, it's now a lot more difficult to get to said guard. Okay, so this isn't too bad. I will say that uh, one thing that really does surprise me, um, and a lot of it's just because I've seen a lot of games made in the same engine, and they are rarely anywhere near this good. Is that this was made in Game Maker. I think all of Tom Francis's games are made in Game Maker. Um, I don't know if he was involved in Tactical Breach Wizards. It wouldn't surprise me if that was made in Game Maker as well. And the only reason I even know that is because... Uh, I mentioned the borderless full screen uh, earlier. I actually got a crash trying to do a variant of borderless full screen. Apparently, if, if this goes larger than the window it is in, it just crashes. I suspect that's an issue with Game Maker. Uh, largely because I'd never seen it. 
But the only reason I even know that it's it's Game Maker is because the error that it popped up was a GML error. Game Maker Live. That is a lot of key clocks. And with no more items on the ship, there's no more reason for us to be here because there's no besides autopilot. I mean, it makes sense that he would have helped with with uh, Bacterial Breach Wizards, but it's is it is is the same studio. But the extreme range is almost never going to be relevant. Now I haven't. Oops, that's that was the wrong button. I haven't shown off the visitor. Uh, what the visitor does is it can teleport you anywhere, including beyond um, behind uh, locked doors. So what happened there is I uh, hit the wrong button. T, if you are in your pod, is uh, eject. And I fat fingered that instead of F, which is fast forward. But it's it's one of those things of this doesn't feel like a game maker game simply on the basis of there's a lot of stuff in here that you know much like how Undertale doesn't really feel like an RPG maker game because there's things that don't feel like they should be possible in RPG maker same deal That's just a regular key cloner. We can sell it at least. Now, emergency shields are interesting. I don't really use them. I never have used them. Oh, was there even any level three doors? But, um, they just never struck me as that good. Yeah, I can at least show off what super shotguns are in the shop. Now, there are several levels of mission beyond Audacious. The mistake ones are in theory supposed to be more difficult, but frequently aren't. Like this one, yeah, yeah, this one is not possible for us, but sometimes you'll run across ones where they don't really have contractors or they, they're jammers. Jammers are almost never that relevant. Um, or just they, the, the kit for them is something you can easily deal with. And it's just uh... now this this is dangerous because it says nine guards but there's really 
I think there's really 11 because of the, those defenders and that, that jammer. And while we have the rechargeable crash beam, I don't know that we necessarily have the stuff to deal with everything. Um, lifelink is, is pretty difficult to deal with, especially with the glitch dash guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna be using the crash beam. Probably actually going to be purchasing another crash beam just to make sure. Since they're relatively inexpensive. And um well, it doesn't actually show up. Uh, the, the super shotgun has not actually showed up yet because the shops have not refreshed. They don't always show up anyway, but... And I nearly hit T again. So it's not really fat fingering so much as it is not paying attention to where my fingers are. And even that's not not really the case. It's I know exactly where my fingers are, and I I think keep thinking it's T. Okay, so that is explosive. That's annoying. Huh? Oh 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 oh, oh shit. There we go. So I'll need to use the crash beam on that defender. Could have been a lot worse. I got both of the uh, contractors taken out. Hey, it's a shield and explosion. Explosion. Ex explosion guy. So that is to note that there is a jammer in there. Now the jammers don't affect us. None of what we do is impacted by them. I don't know that I necessarily need to use the char uh, crash beam there. Our ship is, or the ship is secure. We are perfectly fine. We can just use the controls to get the hell out. Huh, one of the contractors just had a, uh, The automatic ones are debatably useful. I'll show them off real quick. Now they are loud. But of course the 
and the, the qu quick quick fire is nearly that fast but it's not instant I'm gonna keep both on hand but the automatic is probably not going to see that much use see like this is a good example of an audacious one that doesn't seem that hard a lot of its difficulty is with the fact that it has just a 90 second time limit Okay, so we are set up correctly for this. Now, momentum is sometimes really difficult. Where the hell is the captain? Is there a captain? Is this autopilot? Is that the real reason this is difficult? It appears that that is the real reason this is difficult because... Yeah. Ooh, a rechargeable shield. Let's... Use our visitor. Okay. So yeah, that um that was pretty much precisely as difficult as I expected it to be. And that was an audacious audacious mission somehow. Now, admittedly, the timer can make it extremely difficult. Now, pacifist. Pacifist is something I almost never am set up to deal with. Uh, this character with the visitor, um, if we had maybe another uh, method of teleportation as well, I would, I would say possibly. Um... And the, the issue with the rechargeable key cloner is that, generally speaking, you only have one additional shot. So it's it's not as good as it sounds like it should be. And I think in addition to quiet... Oops. Yeah, I forgot about this. Uh, there's a, a log of all of your various stuff. Um, in addition to quiet, there is silenced. Which is just silent. Uh, but I think that might only... Whoops, that was actually not my intention. Um, this is a defector mission. The defectors are generally set up to be very, very powerful. In this case, this is rechargeable but it's not recharging it does have the super shotgun which incidentally is something i'd had wanted to show off anyway it does have a self-charging subverter uh, one of the main weapons we will be using though is the armor piercing short blade because it's goddamn ridiculous well this is yeah
Now, one of the things with the armor piercing short blade is, of course, that the. Uh, It does make you travel along, which can make it really absurd. It's one of those things of with short blades you're actually in a better spot if you have a loud weapon. And then you can just do whatever mission. Um This character is a little bit strange, uh, but this this character is the, I think, daily mission character, daily challenger. Oh, I should. Uh, while we're here, I should check out what the various things are. So this character starts with a rechargeable but not self-charging crash beam and interesting that the rechargeable stuff uh actually can work with that gadget's last charge thing this is another fairly powerful character and the visitor is a really good item to use with a concussion hammer now, I do wish the Concussion Hammer was as strong as far as uh, quickly recharging as the Short Blades, but I fully understand why there isn't a non-lethal weapon that can work like that. Now, as mentioned, this is another. This is one where you can just subvert the telepad, get the alarm going off, and leave, and you're actually in a better situation for it because uh, if you subvert telepads, what it does is it uh, just launches the person outside. And yeah, you can occasionally run across uh, other ships that are unrelated to your mission. You can go in them. You can attack them. It's I believe they're essentially set up to be random, favoring low level. But they almost never have anything good. Oh yeah, lifelink. I always forget about the presence of lifelink. So what I want to do here... Teleport over. Use the quick fire. That's a little bit annoying.
Uh, I am surprised that that actually worked at all. For a few reasons. Now this is going to be annoying to deal with as long as those are those enemies are together. So I'm just going to want to break that lifeline. And one of my favorite things. There we go. Now, I would have preferred to not go out the window myself, but it's it's very difficult to uh, kill somebody like that and not go out the window. Now, interestingly, we are not getting very much in the way of additional kit, which is annoying. Now, the contractors will make this a little bit difficult, but uh, shouldn't be too bad. Oh, uh, conveniently, the contractor that sucks to deal with is right here. And now both contractors are down. Now, occasionally, we will still want to uh, Why didn't that work? Oh, because of the jamming thing. Okay. I always forget that the jammers work on uh, your own devices as well. For your... Not just your devices, your... Utilities. This is another one that seems like it's oddly, an oddly low number of characters.
So I'm going to see if, and not if, where the, uh, yeah, and it, it actually takes a surprising amount of time to unlock concussion hammers for purchase, even though we've been pretty lucky and gotten a fair number of them with uh, our starting characters. My brain can't remember what the... Ah, here, here's the silence guns. Oops. What the subverters look like offhand? Oh yeah, it's these things. Um... Yeah, it's, it's actually a ways away from unlocking rechargeable subverters, which is annoying. Slipstreams are fantastic, though. I have done quite a few characters that have basically had garbage for, for stuff, but had uh, a self-charging slipstream or two. Uh, because what slipstreams do is they slow everything down. Correspondingly, that is very, very powerful. And this is the type of mission that I, I brought up before. Don't even knock anybody out, but kill this person. Um, and it, it used to have kind of a problematic description originally because it would just say harm no one. So, uh, assassinate Benedo Ceylon, harm no one. Um, obviously, they have fixed this with subsequent, subsequent patches. And I think that was only there as that for like a day. But it, uh, it was somewhat amusing. Yeah, I think the hijack the Easterling. But yeah, this is one of those games where because you don't have... You have quite a few options, but you don't... Well, shit. Well, that eliminates the effects of that alarm. I guess I just don't have to care about that anymore. Good to know. That's one of the neat things with traps is they uh, almost universally are just infinitely self-charging. Or at least a lot of the better ones are. But uh, we also need to decide relatively early on, you know, what things we want to go for. In this case, going for the rechargeable subverters, I believe we took a decent enough path. Um, my preference is not to do usable ones. Now, ghost missions basically require the stealth stuff. The uh, the pacifist ones can at least, you know, you, you just don't harm anybody. 
but Ghost pretty much requires extensive use of visitors and stealth. And that can be rough. Uh, rescue missions in particular, I don't think that they travel back with you if you use a visitor, which makes sense. And I don't think we're going to be able to get the various things this character needs to do their personal mission for a while. So let's do this so that we can uh, potentially rescue Indigo Blooper's character. I'm glad that it's not, you know, I don't, actually I don't think I have that many uh, people on my friends list that have this game, so. If it did end up being, you know, a different goon that did it, that had the game. It probably still wouldn't be, you know, potentially a dumb name. Actually, what? <laughs> I should pay attention to what, what we have since this is a new character and all, but, uh, a wrench, so probably don't want to go with something particularly difficult. Uh, we'll probably want to be dual wrenching. Um, yeah, this, this seems fine. With uh, with glitch dash enemies, we will we'll want to have that second wrench as soon as possible. We'll also want to uh, Probably pick up a gun. Oh, especially since it's a concussive gun. Yeah, this, what this character is getting is more in line with what I would expect to get. But it might also be, be, be determined by what level of, you know, missions we're taking. With the other characters, I wasn't really taking anything below hard. And it might be that they changed it so that your your hard stuff still gets still tends to get oof random kit on guards uh, still tends to get uh, better gear, uh, which didn't seem to used to be the case. It used to be it seemed like it was mostly just. Your tougher missions were better because they gave you more money, which you could use to then purchase more overpriced goods and uh, various crates and things of that nature. Well, that's... Oh. Um. I don't have a way of dealing with that. So that's annoying. I 
I don't believe that actually impacts anything long term. I don't think that um, failing a mission like that actually has consequences. I have not certainly not noticed anything of the sort. Uh, no, I don't have a good way of dealing with that. This though, sure. The the thing I didn't have a way of dealing with was mostly the. Um, yeah, and and this is a good example of what I was talking about. The the crash trap is a fair bit more powerful overall than the rechargeable crash beam. Oh, I am dumb as hell. The acid trap is what, what you're supposed to use to deal with the explosive armored dudes, since it strips armor. I don't think I've ever, ever actually paid any attention to the acid trap since it's pretty much only useful in that circumstance. I guess it doesn't work on that. Now those, worst case scenario, they can still be sold for cash. This character's not having much luck when it comes to items. So it might also be like a uh, personal statistic, something uh, sort of luck related. So nothing with these enemies is particularly dangerous. The lifelink will be annoying, but we have two two wrenches. In some ways, two wrenches is better than a single concussion hammer, um, especially early on when you don't have anything worthwhile to use as far as other items, especially since you can always just stops is the issue and that's of course an autopilot ship because why wouldn't it be an autopilot ship
So slipstreams are actually pretty good. I think they're one of my uh, preferred items as far as if I can get one that is self-charging. So looking around at what weapons we have available, I think grabbing an automatic concussive shotgun is a good call. Just on the basis of We can do things like that. And of course the loud is occasionally useful. Now one of the things I do really like about traps in general is that the game knows you are going to forget about them. So they are automatically assigned to that uh, item of it gets sent back to your stash. Well, that actually takes care of one of the major things that I had been concerned about. Um, obviously it can't pierce shields, but nothing can pierce shields. You need to crash them. But this character is better set up to deal with armor than any character we have had so far. And I think actually the, the automatic is probably, yeah. Oof. Now this is probably fine. We'll save 40. We will get 17. That's still technically 57. Um, we don't have a way of dealing with this as an actual ghost. But it won't be a particularly difficult one if we just ignore that ghost clause. That'll make it so we don't have to worry about the, uh... A little bit worried about that, uh, turret, but that way we won't have- shouldn't have to worry about, uh, incoming reinforcements. Even if we do, uh, end up getting seen. Which we're actually doing a pretty good job of avoiding, and uh, we just took out the pilot, so we don't really have that concern anymore. Now one, one problem with the momentum occasionally... I should have used our crash trap. As I was saying, the one one problem with momentum occasionally is like I'm I'm letting go here. 
if you're running at full speed, you uh, actually continue on a little bit past. And this is especially potentially annoying uh, if you have a slipstream going. Because unsurprisingly, if you are moving five times as fast, you can just run through glass. Like ship window glass. Which, uh... Yeah, glory missions are difficult. I have done, I think, precisely one glory mission. And... That was only a glory one. There is glory two, there is glory three, there is glory four and five. Each one, you know, significantly more difficult. Generally speaking, you want to have a very good character with very good gear. I do still kind of love uh, bloodless uh, assassinate missions, though. Yeah, we already have a quiet concussive. That's actually extremely beneficial. And I think I'm going to try to take this ship back in. Assuming it wasn't... I, I never really check enough to make sure that things aren't autopilot. Yeah, good. Teleporting kills you. Always fun to see what other uh, people opt to name the various uh, crap. They uh, chose to have be a specific character's personal item. Now, I don't believe that the personal items, yeah, they, they don't have any additional value beyond what they had as an item. And frankly, there's not really much reason to have additional um, charges of the, the Sidewinder, not when we already have a rechargeable, not self-charging, I keep thinking it is rechargeable, or it is self-charging, um, armor-piercing concussive gun. And like this is one of those things where I don't I don't see the the value I don't see the point. Um you hardly ever have any 
need to have. Um, the stronger or uh, a self-charging key card key cloner whatever So that's actually one of the interesting things is the old timer, of course, as as you know, that said, offers missions where the ships you're dealing with are easy. That's not necessarily to say that the missions you're dealing with are easy, but generally speaking, they are. Uh, they are more like the missions that you had available at the very start of the game. In some cases, easier than that. But a lot of it's just... You have no autopilots, you have no contractors. But you... you I actually see that they changed it because it used to be that you would very rarely see armor or uh, fully shielded units like this. Huh. This particular mission actually seems pretty easy. I think this character's personal mission isn't anywhere near as bad as the uh, last character I was using's personal mission. Which kind of makes sense. Uh, rescue missions for this type of thing don't tend to be that bad. This is my least favorite type of ship, though. Uh, the it's it's a little bit difficult for me to kind of see some of the contrast with how uh, this ship works. I think that we can. That's not it. Oh, that uh, that requires a restart. I, I seem to recall it used to not, but I'm probably just misremembering. Chargeable visitor is always actually somewhat useful. Swappers can be pretty nuts. Now that would have been pretty embarrassing if uh, ended up getting shot by that uh, gun and thus captured and thus losing everything uh, by going down a path I didn't need to go down.
Now, obviously, that's only if you actually have. That X Sovereign is actually very, very powerful for if you use the short blade, um, armor piercing short blades, especially. So yeah, we need to do at least one more mission with this character, but we're probably going to do a few more than that. Now, obviously, this is. Oh, this this character had unambitious. That explains some things. But once we uh, come in and do this mission, um, that other character should be present. Uh, in the as that last spot. amused that somebody decided to uh, keep an item that did not have unlimited uses. I think that occasionally changes it. Yeah. So we can see the stuff that Sumatra Bear had. Now, because things don't recharge when you re recover characters this way, that quite concussive shotgun is at 13 of 16 charges. Which is amusing, but not particularly notable. Also, the said character has killed a lot. Said character has killed more than I have during this entire stream so far. But on the other hand, we have knocked out a hell of a lot of people by comparison. Now, I'm certain that uh, if it was showing, ooh, chargeable slipstream. Uh, since it's the same distance, either way, rechargeable slipstreams are way better deal than the uh, rechargeable subverters. Um, yeah, uh, soft target is one of my favorites, especially if we are doing it before we have much that's really good. Obviously, you're not going to see like glory missions or anything at uh, the the spots that have clients, but and when you mouse over the, the things, it'll show you which ones you have done and which ones you have not. And I think based off what we have seen so far, I want to uh, do these various missions. So I believe that for this, there's not going to be uh, much in the way of, um, or as much uh, key cards. 
or when they are present, they will be, um, ah, that was a fuck up on my part. I was just slow to react. cards are present they will be on this type of guard rather than the ones that have the glitch dash waiting for that guy to move at all. Huh. I was unaware that, uh, just how ridiculous the range on that was. This actually looks like a good spot for this. Yeah, we took a shot. That's not not really a big deal. If if we don't get tossed out, I don't think it actually um does anything amusingly since the alarm just doesn't do anything anymore. Oh, God damn it. I made that one unwinnable. Good job, me. Oh, fuck you, game. It is ultimately rather finicky. about it a lot of the time.
This is one of my favorite types of situations because it's... Actually, that's probably going to be useful. Um, because it's just so dumb. So where is the pilot? The pilot is right there. Now we should be fine. Especially since that ended up being relevant to that rather than... This is going to go poorly. I wasn't sure if that actually worked, for the record. Like, I knew you could remote control your pod, um... when you yourself are floating about. But I wasn't sure if you could do it just in general circumstances. Um... That explains why it didn't zoom in. But the defector missions in general are pretty enjoyable. This one is one of the strangest ones.
just because it's so difficult to navigate to this ship. And I fucked that one up. Being on the wrong side is actually very easy to, uh... And there we go. We have basically no uh, no method of dealing with most of these, and we need need to use the armor piercing pistols on the guards. Fortunately, fortunately, it just uses regular bullets. Yeah, this is a kind of a just kill everybody type character. And there's nothing wrong with that type of character. But the fact of the matter is, as this character had lost his pod, he did not have a way other than killing everybody to get back. And it's one of those things of if your pod gets destroyed and you're loading, you're, you're getting on a station, not a station, a ship with autopilot, you don't have a good way to get home. In some cases, you don't have a way to get home. So while it's good that that is showing you that that is a possibility, almost no character is going to have that. Huh. I hit that just a tiny bit too late.
And yeah, this character, you're supposed to, you know, assassinate things via your, uh, your shield. But also, every enemy has a shotgun. Uh, that, a lot of that was, um, as ever the uh, interesting way in which explosions work. And slipstream works. And sometimes that is, they don't. I don't think you really get a reward for for the defector missions for the record i think it's just you know try to help you with various things you might have not realized were possible uh I didn't realize one of the enemies there had a uh, shield. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, of course that enemy is the one that has the goddamn key. So where is the pilot? Oh, pilot is way too fucking far away. Yeah, fuck that. just kind of difficult. I think that you're, you're actually intended to use the steel key card action, which you're otherwise basically not really forced to use. There we go. So not too, too bad.
now as the player character, we have a fair bit more oxygen than the uh, rescue target. But it was just a hell of a lot safer to bring back the rescue target and such that way. And faster, but most of the time I don't really care about it taking a little bit longer. I say as if half the time I have been shot or otherwise injured in this game has not been because I have uh, been trying to rush. But like I said, the Defector missions mostly seem to be set up to kind of teach you things you otherwise would not learn. Um, this one is is kind of showing you the, the way that the short blade and long blade interact with each other. You can use the long blade to get in close to a whole group of targets and then use the short blade to kill everybody. I actually don't know what... what don't remember what that one is. Oh, that one was the one we already did. Um, yeah, and this is the subverter and visitor. Um, I believe the intent is basically you set off the alarm and then you subvert the telepad. And this is to demonstrate how multiple sidewinders interact with each other. Um, which isn't quite as good as how multiple visitors interact with each other, if I remember correctly. Um, shot. So yeah, the, the subverter is pretty much our only real option for killing. Oh, we don't have charge. And this is also very, very helpfully demonstrating just how uh, ridiculous uh, sentry guns are. I think that's the really the major intent there is just to help demonstrate hey if they have sentry guns and armor the armor is irrelevant of course the fact of the matter is you're never really going to have enough subverters to really deal with with them unfortunately I think this will be the uh, the last one I do. Um.
Interesting that nobody really came over to check that out. So we need to kill the uh, captain. Well, we need to find and kill the captain. Fortunately, the captain is right over here. Oh, some enemies do have guns. There we go. This one's mostly just kind of a... You know, do the mission thing. But I never really got good with, uh, like, swappers or glitch traps. I much, much prefer just using two weapons most of the time over trying to fuss with that stuff. Because that's, that's, that's really the issue, is most of the time it is pretty fussy. Um, the glitch traps, the range is just very, very tiny. Um, swappers, they can be very useful, especially if, if they can get you into an area you otherwise don't have the keycard for. But if they're not self-charging, you don't then have an, a way to get back out, and sometimes the character will walk away or otherwise just make it so you don't have access to that stuff. Anyway, that is going to be it for me. Uh, I will be back with something different tomorrow. Still have not yet decided. Um, because while I really enjoy this game, I don't... I'm not real sure that since it's just the same content over and over again, it's a great stream game. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you then.